Good morning and welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. Part 64, fitting the firehole door and checking the system for leaks. From now on, this job is going to get fiddly and complicated. And I would just like to reiterate the point when people write in and say, I have a steam locomotive that is 99% finished, how much will it cost to finish it? I would estimate that this locomotive is around 99% finished. This is episode 63. There is still quite a long way to go finishing this engine. I'm now working on this engine every day. That is the only way I'm going to get it finished without stalling and then not finishing it. I'm working on the fire hole door at the moment, and here it is, the fire hole door. And as I believe I mentioned in the last episode, the problem with this is, in order to remove the fire hole door, I first have to remove the check valves. And in order to remove the check valves, I first have to remove the fire hole door. This fire hole door assembly is going to be fitted into the fire hole with just a bead of high temperature silicone rubber. Some miniature steam boilers have mounting points for the fire hole door built into the boiler when they're made. On this boiler, there were no mounting points, so the only option to what I'm doing is to drill into the boiler, thread the boiler, and fit hinges to it. I don't think that's a good idea. This is one of the original check valves. I'm not going to use this, but it's given me an idea to just shorten the top caps of the ones that I bought for the job. These check valves are made by Chris English of CME Engineering. And now it's over to the lathe. I'm holding the check valve by the actual nut on the end of it, which is not the best thing to do, because the part that I'm machining is now quite a long way from the chuck. It would have made more sense to remove the end cap, fit that into a nut in the chuck, and machine it that way. But I do like to live dangerously. It's the only excitement I get these days. I'm taking very light cuts, and as you can see, the entire part is moving, so this is not very good mechanical practice. The worst case scenario is the part could fall out of the chuck and be destroyed. My impatience is getting the better of me and I'm taking too deep a cut and look what happens. The part has come loose in the chuck but it's not a big problem, the only damage is to the union nut that's holding it. Had I have held it by the threads this part would be scrapped now. I often get unpleasant comments from machinists out there but I don't really care, I like doing it this way to show people how not to do it. After cleaning the edge of the top cap with the file, I then removed the check valve from the chuck, took it into the outer part of the workshop and used my polishing spindle to shine up the cap. And on my way back from the polishing spindle, I selected a new union nut to replace the one that I damaged. And here is the check valve fitted in place. As you can see, the top cap is a lot shorter and I think this should just clear the fire hole door. The check valve already has a shim washer on it to the right thickness to make it sit in the right position. So all I need to do is apply some Loctite 542 thread sealant and screw it tightly into the hole on the back head of the boiler. The next part of the job was to do exactly the same to the other check valve and this time I didn't make it jump out of the chuck. So I didn't need to replace the lower union nut. And here, after applying some Loctite 542 as usual, I'm tightening up the right hand check valve. It's important to always wipe away excess Loctite products because they're very good at removing paint, as you can see by the hexagon part of the check valve. Even after all that, I had to remove a very tiny amount of the brass mounting which holds the fire hole door. One viewer sent me a comment after the last episode saying, Why don't I just make an extension for the check valves? I don't want to do that because these check valves are visible when the engine's fully back together, they're above the level of the floor, which also means that the piping from the check valves would stick out into the cab as well. Just the thing to catch pieces of coal. I'm going to apply some Loctite 542 to the blowdown valves and fit these in place. I found a shim washer, just the right thickness to allow the pipe to face downwards when the blowdown valve was fitted in place. The next part of the job is to fit a silicone o-ring, but I think looking at this job, I may just use some silicone rubber from the same tube that I used to fit the fire hole door, because I don't think a silicone rubber o-ring is going to stay where I put it. These are a pair of safety valves that I found in a box of old safety valves. The hexagon part is not the same thickness on each of them, and they don't look very good. Plus for this particular engine, I think they're a bit too tall. 
And as most Great Western locomotives didn't have individual safety valves, they had the fancy sort of tapered cone with a safety valve inside. I fitted them anyway because I want to test the boiler, but today I'm going to phone David English and order a pair of express safety valves, which are much shorter. And now it's fun time. I've connected a piece of silicone rubber piping to one of the check valves, and this piece of silicone rubber piping is connected to the compressor, so now I can put some air pressure into the boiler. I can do it with confidence because the boiler has a certificate and has been tested to twice working pressure. Immediately there is a bit of a problem, easily fixed. The nut on the bottom part of the water gauge needs tightening because it's blowing. It's very important when you tighten water gauge nuts not to over tighten them. If you do, the glass will break. I've reconnected the air supply and here I'm testing the valves. They all seem to be okay. The regulator works well. But the pressure gauge doesn't, and I think I know why. When I fitted the pressure gauge siphon, I used two copper washers and quite a lot of Loctite 542, and I think that has blocked the hole up. And when I started to remove the siphon, the pipe snapped off. Note to self, before removing any fittings from a boiler, it's a good idea to isolate the air supply. Here's the new union, and I'm not using any Loctite 542 just the two washers that come with them. And then I refitted the pressure gauge in exactly the same way that I removed it. And as I open the air valve, as you can see, the pressure rises on the pressure gauge, up to about 40 pounds per square inch, that should be okay. It seems to run quite well. The regulator is very airtight, which is a good thing. The only air leak I can detect is from the glands on the steam chest, which is an easy job. I'll be repacking these very shortly. The job is now developing quite nicely. The brakes are in place, the boiler's on the frames, but only temporarily. I'll probably pack both the piston and steam chest glands. But I think the next job that is imminent is the mounting of the smoke box onto the smoke box saddle. I will go up to the workshop very shortly and do that. I'd just like to say stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.